aluminum fiber. Stronger than titanium, almost as strong as steel. Stronger than aluminum, less weigh, weighs less than aluminum or titanium. To lose the cardboard mold, a little backyard ingenuity is employed. We're going to put it in a swimming pool. You're about ready for that, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> go for it, man. Go, it, go! <laughs> it looks awfully good. It ought to be in there. I'm working on it. All righty. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and so I think we're actually quite close. The fins are slotted to fit into the tail and are basically all that will keep this thing stable as Aurora tops out at nearly 1,400 miles per hour, twice the speed of sound. The pieces of the airframe are assembled and Aurora's exterior begins to take shape. While Aurora will fly on one large motor, there's another way to get that power. It's called a cluster. Builders take several motors and combine them for added punch. Team Al's Hobby Shop took this idea to the extreme with a nine-motor monster. Meet the Beast. Anyone who's doing this loves it. Trying to capture lightning, the thrill of it. I don't know how to explain it until you're up close and personal. You build something with your bare hands and watch it go up, way up in the sky, almost to space. If you talk to the people at NASA, nine out of 10 of them started flying model rockets when they were a kid. What the mind can do is just unreal. When he builds rockets, he just takes it all out and just leaves it. And then we all have to pick up half of them. That's the worst part. My wife loves going out and seeing these things fly. I know several of them that do, until the bill comes in the mail. <laughs> I had this parachute kind of folded up tight for a while. And I unrolled it just so that it all kind of stretches out so that it unfolds. Because parachutes have a tendency, you know, if you leave them folded and stored for a long time, to just sort of hold their shape. And that's not a good thing when it comes out of the rocket. <laughs> Take the chute in first. In first, now it's going to come out this way. Well, it's actually going to get blown from down here. Yeah, but the chute's coming this way. That's going to have to be above everything, right? No, if we're blowing this this way. Actually, right. this is going to be the main, so it's going to be going that way. Right actually, it's blowing out this way. It's actually coming out that way. Oh, well, then we've done it backwards then. Yeah, because the shear pin's just blowing it out through. All right, well, you got a little bit of backwards. you got to put the gold in first. Right? The best part is when that big parachute comes out and saves it from crashing the ground. Okay, I'll make this as short and sweet as possible. Team B's from Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, Georgia, and Iowa will be launching a scratch-built, three times upscaled Hawk Mountain Beast. It's 12 inches in diameter and 25 feet tall. There will be a drogue at Apogee and a main at 800 feet. The backup altimeter will also fire at 800 feet. It is powered by Aerotech Motors, one central N2000 surrounded by two M1315s, two K560s, four K700s. Want that in English? This thing has nine separate motors, ranging from mid-size to massive. Total power? Try about 11,000 pounds of thrust. At its peak, that's 13,500 horsepower, or about 40 times the punch you get when you floor it in a full-sized SUV. Sure is a pretty rocket. Feel good. The moment we've been waiting for. <laughs> Almost ready. We're nervous, and we're hoping for the best. Always part of the flight, the nerves. But when it comes back under shoot, it's just totally awesome. The Beast in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Yeah, there it is, there it is, Tim.
By the smoke. No by the smoke, right it's here. It's below the sun. By the way, down way. To the over here. Way over oh, here. I see it. I see it. I see it. Come on. 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 Where is it at? Where is it at, baby? Show it to me. Come on. Come on. Oh, f me. Comfort 2 blew apart. Oh. oh! Oh my God! The autopsy on the beast? Those nine engines got it to 11,698 feet in 23 seconds. Top speed? More than 640 miles per hour. The two parachutes didn't do their part soon enough, and 3,000 pounds of $8,000 of rocket came down to Earth fast and hard. We're going to go see what's left. You know what? It would have been nice if that chute came out, but I'm happy. Well, how bad is she? Oh, oh I want to see where the other fin is. The chute came out. It just didn't open up. It didn't catch enough air. You know what? If everything worked, you wouldn't be doing it. It'd be too damn easy. This is just going to make me do it again. You know that, don't you? Well, my wife will allow me to do it again. <laughs> Rocket Challenge is brought to you in part by Tide. It... Among the thousands of launches over six days in Argonia, Kansas, some extreme and high-flying machines left the pads. But one team at Rocket Challenge decided to focus their talents on something a little more down-to-earth. Hi, I'm Mark Carr. I'm from Cameron, Missouri. I'm with a group of four doctors, and we wanted something really unusual, something that uh, that was simple and eye-catching, just something fun. We decided just to go back to our roots and make a giant pop bottle rocket. The very top is our is our 16-foot tall pop bottle rocket. We were originally going to launch the whole pop bottle. It's a great idea on paper, but in the testing phase, a crucial discovery is made. That is what we do not want to do when all the other rocket guys are looking at us. From that point on, the pop bottle itself became the launch rod, and the pop bottle rocket is the rocket. In that, we're going to use a Cesaroni rocket motor, a four grain K motor that'll have about 120 pounds of thrust for 3.2 seconds. We envision this as being something. In other scale. words, this so bottle it rocket gets its pop from a mid sized engine two. carrying three pounds of solid fuel that should send it up about 3,500 feet. Finally, something resembling a colossal bottle begins to emerge from the styrofoam. It looks great. Oh, yeah. Just think how Michelangelo felt when he made his first pop bottle. <laughs> <laughs> kind of an eye catcher. Okay, they've created a work of art. And now that it's on its way to the launch pad in Kansas, the only thing anyone wants to know is, will it fly? Ed Myers, Dr. Matt Cannon, Dr. Jeremy Youngblood, Kansas City, Missouri. World's largest pop bottle rocket is the name of it. Three, two, one. Great flight, so-so recovery. But that doesn't shake up the bottle rocket crew. Oh, man, that was great. <laughs> For Team Extreme, Aurora is still an empty shell. Now it's time to put something under the hood. The 80-pound solid fuel motor they will make from scratch will be the biggest booster ever to clear the pad at LDRS. To give you an idea of how much power we're dealing with in this P motor, think of your average four-door sedan. Now think of, of igniting that motor underneath it and throwing it up on top of a 10-story building. To